Welcome to episode 12 of the Automation Podcast brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm Sean Tierney, your host, and on today's show, we'll be talking about Rockwell Automation's software activation, also known as factory talk activation. Now, when personal computers first came out and people began writing software and selling software, one of the things they quickly found out was if they didn't include some type of copy protection, their software would be pirated and they wouldn't get a lot of sales. So to address that, many of the small independent companies included software activation into their products. So if we look at PLCs, back in the early days, Rockwell used to make the 6200 series of software as well as APS, and that software was not copy protected. Now, it still was licensed, and customers were on an honor system that if they bought one copy, they would only use one copy on one computer. And since Rockwell was selling the hardware, they really didn't have to worry so much about the software being pirated because they were making their money on the hardware itself. However, the independent companies producing what they considered better programming software for the Allen Bradley PLC, like ICOM with its AI series, they didn't get a penny of the hardware sales. So they had to ensure that when somebody bought their software, they were only going to use it once and they weren't going to pirate it to dozens of other computers in the facility. So that's where, as far as the Allen Bradley PLC line is concerned, software activation or copy protection came into being. Now, In the mid-90s, Rockwell purchased ICOM software. They knew they were going to have to move to Windows-based programming software, and ICOM had an impressive intelligent suite of software products that all ran on Windows 3.1 and did everything from program your PLC5 to data acquisition and trending to a full-blown software-based HMI or SCADA system. For any of you who are using software back in the days, you'll probably recognize the names WinLogic 5, WinView, WinTrend, and my favorite, WinLynx. And that was a very impressive suite. So like I said, Rockwell went ahead and purchased them. They merged them in with their own Allen Bradley software line, and they adopted the copy protection mechanism that ICOM was using at the time, a master floppy disk. Now, the way a master floppy disk works is when you get the floppy disk, you install it into your computer, and then you run a command on the disk called evmove, and that creates a hidden file on your root drive, which contains the super secret code that allows the software to work. Over the years, two things became apparent. Number one, people were figuring out how to copy the floppy disks. Number two, floppy disks were harder to come by because most companies were moving their media to CD-ROMs. Now, at this point, there's an interesting rumor I heard from a couple different Rockwell people. Don't know if it's true, but I'll share it here because it's actually kind of interesting. So as the story goes, somebody on the west coast of America was making copies of floppy disks and selling them online. And Rockwell sued that person saying, that's our software, you cannot copy it and resell it. And apparently a liberal judge said, hey Rockwell, your copy protection measures are so pitiful that we're going to allow this guy to do it. We're throwing your case out of court. Now, again, this is a rumor. I don't know if I actually believe this because it seems very suspicious, but I wanted to share it with you because it's kind of a funny story. In any case, knowing that at least two of these reasons were real, Rockwell set out to find a new copy protection mechanism for their software. They interviewed many companies, and they finally chose the company that does the activation for Autodesk products, which Rockwell implemented as Factory Talk Activation. Now, I personally wish they wouldn't have put the Factory Talk name in front of the activation. I think they should have called it Rockwell Activation because it kind of gave Factory Talk a bad name for quite a while, but that's what their marketing people decided to do. So back to factory talk activation. The way it works is not unlike Microsoft products. So if you buy a copy of Windows XP and you go to install it on your brand new hard drive, at the end of the installation, you'll be asked to activate the product. If you don't activate Windows XP, you'll get a grace period. It'll run for a number of days without any issue. But eventually for it to run at normal full capacity, you will have to activate it. Now with Microsoft, you can either activate it online, which is by far the easiest, Or you can call them and read back and forth these very long hexadecimal numbers. Personally, I prefer to activate it online. I type in my product key off the back of the CD case or from the bottom of your laptop where there's typically a sticker. And it'll activate and you're good to go. Now with the Rockwell system today, you actually have several means of activating your software. Again, you can activate it online, which is the easiest. You can also activate it over the phone, which is the most difficult. Or you can actually activate it via email or via chat, or via fax. 
And you can even activate it from a separate PC which has an internet access and then just move the activation file to the PC that does need that activation. Now how does the activation work? So when you buy the software you get a serial number and a product key. And you'll need both of those with any of the activation methods to get your activation file. Which is just a text file that ends in .lic. When you get the text file you just put it in the right directory and then your factory talk activation software will find that file and activate your software. Now like Windows if you install your Rockwell software but you don't have an activation all packages now have a seven day grace period. So you can run the software full blown for seven days without an activation file. The only nuisance is you'll get a pop up telling you that you're in grace mode and that you don't have an activation file. After the seven days most packages won't run. Although many of the view packages like RSView32, Factory Talk View ME, and Factory Talk View SE will run in a two hour demo mode. If you need to use the software without buying it for more than seven days, Rockwell does offer like a try before you buy program where you can request from your local Rockwell office or local Rockwell authorized distributor a 30 day temporary license that they'll email you and will give you 30 days to actually use the software, no charge. The hitch is the temporary activation system is designed so that a single customer can only get a temporary activation on a particular product once. So every 30 days you just can't request another temporary activation for let's say RS Logics. Now if you just purchased your Rockwell or Allen Bradley software and you need to activate it but you're a little confused, the instructions don't seem to make a lot of sense, fret not because Rockwell offers free technical support for activation questions. You can either call them or you can chat with them online totally free, no support contract required. Even if the software is 5, 10 years old, they're still going to help you. Additionally, Rockwell has several documents and videos that show you how to activate your software. So I won't go through the step-by-step -step process here. Just know that in this podcast blog post, I'll have links to the Automation Blog and the Automation Minute where you'll find additional information on using Factory Talk Activation. Well, that's it for this episode of the Automation Podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, please don't hesitate to share them with us by replying to this episode's blog post at theautomationpodcast.com. However, if you have questions about using activation, you may just want to contact Rockwell directly because it's free. And you can always stay up to date with all the Insights websites at insightsandautomation.com or by connecting with me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn where I'm known as Mr. Sean Tierney. Before we go, let's take a look at what's coming up on our next podcast. Tune in next week for episode 13 of the Automation Podcast, where we'll discuss how you can get free copies of Rockwell and Alan Bradley software. Well, that's it for episode 12 of the Automation Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and until next time, peace.